Okay, makes sense, makes sense. So, being a practice squad player, like, what is your job at practice? Are y'all just, like, bodies at practice? Or are y'all, like, picking up the field? Like, what are y'all doing? I don't know. So, like, it's a big misconception, you know? People think, like, practice squad players are, you know, just, like, all-around shitty players that, you know, have no chance of making it when... You know, I've seen some guys go from P-Squad and sign multi-million dollar contracts. You know, like, if you look at Khalif Raymond for the um, for the Lions, me and him signed to Tennessee, you know, like the same day. And it's like, you know, obviously I bounced around, you know, for a couple of years after that, and then I was out the league. Two years later, this motherfucker signing a pretty good deal, you know, as a slot receiver because he got an opportunity in Tennessee that year, and then Detroit picked him up. So yeah, he started out, he was on Peace Squad for like two years. Two years later, he signed a big boy contract. So, but yeah, our responsibility is like, hey, you know, like, you know, like if you played any level of football, high school or college, you know, it's, it's a scout team. You know, you're going up there, you know, coaches are showing, you know, showing everybody a card, here's what you do. And it's like, you're going out there and doing that shit to the best of your ability. Cause if you just let, you know, if you're an old lineman and you just, a swinging gate for, you know, the defense. They ain't going to fucking keep you around, you know? So it's like, you got to go out there and you got to go compete with that starting D-line, that starting defense. Because um, at the end of the day, they're, they're trying to develop you. Like, they're not just looking at it like, oh, yeah, we just need a P-Squad body. It's like, nah, man, if we're going to invest this money into somebody, we want to see if we can get this guy to develop at minimum into a starter. And if they see certain traits, certain qualities, it's like, hey, if we can get this freak athlete who's, and I hate to say it this way, but not very good at football yet, if we can get him to understand how to be good at his position, then fuck, like, you know, the the return could be great, you know? So they're, they're not just looking for slap dicks and, you know, holdovers on P-Squad. Like, they're looking for guys who have a real chance to go become starters one day and really, you know, help and impact the team. So... Yeah, man, you got a duty. Like, and at the end of the day, you're trying to get the starters right. Because, like I said, if you're just if you're just letting the defense win, they they're about to be going against starters on Sunday. Like, they're not going against somebody who's just gonna give bullshit effort and just you know let you win a rep. So, you got to go out there and get these motherfuckers prepared to go. And at the end of the day, sometimes you're going against potential fucking Hall of Famers. You don't know if they could. You don't know if they're gonna chill in practice, or you don't know if there's somebody who is gonna turn up for 50 fucking reps and give you a game day, you know, environment three, four times a fucking week. You know, so it just depends on the teams who you're going against. But sometimes being on P Squad is on the easier side. Sometimes if you got a great D line that's on your team, sometimes being on P Squad could be fucking hell because. <laughs> It's like shit, like, you know, I had to, um, like in practice, you know, with those teams I've been on, I done had to practice against Khalil Mack, Chandler Jones, and then the thing that fucked me up the most, like, one of the only times I've been starstruck with a teammate was when I was in Carolina. I'm lining up my first rep at, at P-Squad Tackle, Julius Peppers is right there. I'm like, man, holy shit. I've been watching this motherfucker ball <laughs> since I was a kid. And, I, and like, you know, kid, kids don't understand it because, you know, that, that wasn't their era. But, man, you know, Julius Peppers was like, he was like the first freak, you know, like that was a motherfucker. Yeah, he, he, cha he changed the defensive end game. Everybody wanted the Julius Peppers after he came Holy out. shit, man. Yeah. Like, this dude is 6'6". At that point in his career, like, you know, I was like the last year, he was like 300. So he wasn't quite moving, you know, like, you know, we're used to seeing Julius Peppers move. But at the end of the day, that's still Julius fucking Peppers. So that bitch is still moving. And at that point, he's older. He's smarter. He's got that grown-ass man strength. So it's like that motherfucker puts his hands on you. It's like, it's like, God damn, bro. Like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? But, you know, people can think it's easy all you want to, but those guys don't get to Sunday, you know, just by skating through, you know, Monday through Friday, Monday through Saturday. Like, these are motherfuckers that are preparing and working on their fucking craft and their skills and putting themselves in game-like scenarios. So it's like, 
you can think practice squad is sweet all you want to. You go out there bullshitting. Like, good luck to the average Joe trying to play against Khalil Mack in his prime. Chandler Jones, like, get the fuck out of here. Like, that is some tough shit. I don't give a fuck what nobody says. And for the most part, you know, like, you have some cocky dudes that are like, oh, yeah, fuck P-Squad guys, whatever. But it's like, the veterans that know, it's like, man, the motherfuckers, like, they're like, look, y'all job is tough because y'all got to block us multiple days a week. Them guys on Sunday, like, they get us, you know, 50, 60 opportunities. You get 200 a week, you know, so... Yeah, man, you catching some serious work in, in practice. I don't give a fuck who you are. You catching real deal work. Yeah, that's wild, man. I would have been starstruck too, man. Cause when Julius Peppers came out, what it was, I think he was jacked like what, oh two, man. I was like four. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> And then you see this big motherfucker one hand interceptions and shit, running down, fucking stiff arming people. He was a basketball player. It's yeah. like like bro, this is one of the most Physically gifted motherfuckers you could ever come across. And shit, 100, what, 130 sacks later or some shit? Like, like you, you can't take that lightly. Like, there's motherfuckers that play football for half their life and don't have 120 sacks in their whole entire career, from high school to the pros. This motherfucker did all that shit in the pros. Like, crazy. Man, yeah, man, that's wild. They go, they go from... Watching somebody on TV idolize, now you got to line up right across from him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he about, and you know he about to put his hands on you. No, yeah. It's, it's like, it's like God damn, bro. Like, yeah, I wanted to be in the NFL, but it's like, bro, I don't want to play against a motherfucker like you, bro. Like, God damn. Like, you know, that's when you retire. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> 